Welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a highly requested tutorial on creating and rigging your very own character in Blender. We will show you how to start from a cube and turn it into a fully rigged character with clothing. Let's dive in. Uh, first things first, let's not delete the cube like we usually do. Instead, tab into edit mode, press A to select all, and then hit M to merge at the center. This gives us a single vertex point. Now change the viewport angle to minus Y, go to the modifiers tab, add a skin modifier and select shade smooth, and then add a subdivision surface modifier. And finally, toggle X-ray mode so we can see the vertices in the mesh. Now we have a sphere here. While still in edit mode, let, let's start pulling out vertices to create the body, arms, and legs. You can do this however you like. Just pull out a stickman-like shape to get started. We can always adjust things as we go. Once you have the basic body and legs done, we need to mark the hips area as the root. Select the vertex point at the hips and click mark root. Next, we need to mirror our modifications to the other side. While still in the modifiers tab, add a mirror modifier. Then drag this to the top of the list of modifiers to ensure it mirrors all the changes. Now let's start shaping our stick man to look a bit more human. Grab different vertex points and to scale, press Ctrl plus A and pull. As you adjust the size of your character, you can also add new vertex points by right clicking and selecting subdivide. Move these around and scale them to get the desired look. If you get areas of the mesh that look like they're overlapping and going crazy, just continue to adjust the points, ensuring the body is centered. The mirror modifier and the skin modifier can sometimes have conflict, so just pull around, scale and readjust. Looking good, we've got a pretty solid base body. Now let's move on to creating some hands. Switch to top view and enter edit mode. Start by pulling out five vertices to form the basic shape of a hand. Yes, it might not look great at this stage, but it's an easy fix. With those five points pulled out, we'll create four fingers and a thumb. Just position them roughly for now. We can readjust them in a moment. Select all the new vertex points we made, then press Ctrl plus A to scale them down. You'll see the fingers start to take shape. If any fingers look odd, just adjust their locations until they look right and fit well. All right, I think we're ready to create the head. This will be a simple head for now, but it provides a solid base for any character. Remember, this tutorial is all about creating a versatile character design that you can customize to suit your desired look. First, add a cube and drag it up to the top of the body. Then add a subdivision surface modifier and set the viewport level to 2. Next, tab into edit mode on your cube. Add a loop cut by pressing Command plus R for Mac or Control plus R for Windows. Then pull the back edge of the cube up and the front edge down to create more of a head shape. Finally, right click and select Shade Smooth to make it look nicer. Let's go into the next part, the feet. Let's rescale and adjust our character so that is stumps are just above the floor. The great thing about this setup is that we can easily go back and make adjustments to the character. For example, I wasn't too happy with the legs, so I quickly made a few tweaks until I was satisfied with the shape. Now that I'm happy with it, I need to prepare the character for creating clothing and rigging. First, I'll duplicate the model. I'll name one body template so I can go back to it if needed. The duplicated model will be named body. And this is where I'll apply the necessary modifiers. I'll apply the mirror and skin modifiers to the body model, but keep the subdivision surface modifier intact. But if you want to apply the subdivision modifier, you can apply it at different levels to ensure you have good control over certain areas. And of course, add another subdivision modifier again if needed. Okay, anyway, back to the feet. First, bring in a cube. Adjust the pivot point of the cube to be at the bottom by going into edit mode. In the site menu, you'll find transform. Type one into the Z axis and scale it down to fit the ankle area of the character. Add a subdivision surface modifier and increase the level to two. In edit mode, extrude the foot out and shape the ankle area to look like a high top shoe. Next, select all the edges at the bottom of the shoe and increase the mean crease to around 0.5 to flatten the shoe to the ground. Add a loop cut for the sole of the shoe, then Alt plus right click for Windows or Option plus right click for Mac to select the looped edge. In face mode, right click and select extrude faces along normals and pull out to create the sole. Back in edge mode, select all the inside edge around the sole and increase the mean crease again to give a clear separation between the shoe and the sole. And finally, I'll make a few more tweaks to the height of the shoe and add some additional mean creases to finish off the look. Feel free to customize it however you like to make it your own. We'll also shade the shoe smooth and add a mirror modifier, selecting the character as the object. And there we have our shoes. Now onto the clothing. Let's create a top. So let's switch to front view. Enter edit mode and select the wireframe viewport with shift plus Z. With faces selected, drag over the area where the top would be, keeping the edges as straight as possible. Go around the mesh and select and deselect areas to make up your top mesh. We can refine them once the top is made. Once you have your selection complete, press Shift plus D to duplicate, hit Enter, then press P and click Selection to create a new mesh. Now that we have our top, let's make some simple adjustments to the edges. The main part we want to focus on is adding a Solidify modifier. Set the Solidify modifier to only rim and adjust the thickness to around minus 0.03. Then Shade Smooth again. 
Next, we'll use the same process for the trousers. Select our main character and press the forward slash to isolate that mesh, showing only the character mesh. Tap into edit mode, select the areas where the trousers will be just like before, then press shift plus D to duplicate. Hit enter and then press P and choose selection to create the trousers. I'll once again repeat the process of adding the solidify modifier, selecting only rim and adjusting the thickness. Let's make some more changes to the top so it hangs over the trousers. Select the bottom edge of the top. If it's hard to see with the solidify modifier edit, you can click this icon here on cage to make it easier to work with. With it selected, turn on proportional editing by pressing O and scale up the edge. You can also extrude the top if you want it longer. Just press E and pull down, then adjust the scale as needed. Sometimes your edges might not be straight, like ours here. Here's a quick tip. Select the edge you want to straighten, then hit S plus Z plus zero. Simple. Okay, now under rigging, press Shift plus A, go to armature and select basic human. You'll need rigify enabled. Scale it up to fit inside your character. To make editing the bones easier, select the armature, go to data properties, then viewport display, and check in front. Next, we need to edit the position of the bones in edit mode. To ensure the left and right sides are symmetrical, just enable the x-axis mirror up here. Now, when you move a bone on one side, it will match the opposite side. This only works if the bones are set up correctly. And since we selected the basic human rig, it's all done for us. Since your character might be slightly different, you'll need to match the bones yourself. Keep these things in mind. One, keep the bones within the mesh to avoid weight issues. Two, make sure the arms and legs are slightly bent naturally. If you bend the arms the wrong way, that's how they'll bend when rigged. Now, as we have separate parts like the top, trousers and shoes, select all of the meshes, then select the armature last. Press Command plus P on Mac or Control plus P on Windows and choose with automatic weights. When we go into pose mode with our armature, you'll see our character is linked up perfectly, but the movement is terrible and needs more work to animate. So with the rig selected, go into data properties and scroll down to generate rig. Select that, and here is your IK rig. Scale it up to match your character. Delete the old armature. Now parent the new IK rig to your character by selecting all meshes, selecting the rig last, and pressing Command plus P on Mac or Control plus P on Windows, then choosing with automatic weights. Now, when we go into pose mode, look at the control we have. Our character is fully rigged and ready for animation. We can select any of these controllers and move the character around. Notice how the legs and arms react more accurately. There's so much more we can explore, but we wanted to keep this tutorial simple and straightforward. If you'd like to see more or dive deeper into this project, leave a comment below or drop any questions you have. We'll do our best to answer and help you out. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.